Hi, I'm Worthy. I'm Kemi. Um, welcome to my home in London. I call it Cottage Noir and I'd love to show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hello everyone, I'm Kemi Lawson. We're in Stanmore in North London in my home, which I call Cottage Noir. This house has a very long and interesting history. We think it was built around 1750, 1760. And it's actually two cottages, two workmen's cottages. One was a bakery and one was where the, the baker lived. And sometime in the last 20 years, the, house, the two cottages were converted into one family home. So the walls are about this thick. They're really thick brick, brick walls um, with a lot of kind of lime plaster, natural plaster on them. Um, it's got lots of fireplaces, lots of wooden beams, um, which we think have been repurposed from some ships. But this is very much a family home. I live here with my husband and my two little daughters who are 10 and 12. And it's got a lovely story of kind of continuous res residence from people from 1750 up till now. And I know so much about this house because when we moved in, we inherited this lovely book, which was full of information about the house that successive people who have lived here have filled in from the census records in 1760, so we know the name of the actual baker, up until people you know, living 20 years ago in the house and the kind of work they've done. So it's a it was a lovely feeling of, we're now the new custodians of this house and then we'll pass it on to the next family when we move. I immediately knew I had to move in when I came into the house because I just love the aesthetic and I love the energy that I felt in the house. I term the way I've decorated this home as Afro Aristo meets Caribbean Nan Chic. Now let me explain what I mean by that. Our heritage is Nigerian and Jamaican and I've de definitely drawn on these two different kind of black heritages to inform how I wanted the home. So I've got a lot of kind of fabrics and textiles and art and colour that remind me both of my childhood spent in Nigeria and also of my mother's country, Jamaica. Welcome to the Cottage Noir hallway. As I said, this is very much a lived-in family home. It's my daughter's 12th birthday today, so you'll see balloons and cards, which we use to celebrate today. And I'll talk you through a few of the other items in this room. So the first thing you see when you come in is this wallpaper, which is a black and white wallpaper that I saw from this designer in Haiti called Yela Valerie. And what they are, if you look closely, are little houses. And these are Haitian houses called gingerbread houses. And it's what the Haitian aristocrats and the powerful people of the 1900s used to built to live in. So if you remember before, I said my aesthetic was kind of Afro Aristo. I wanted to show the high end, the luxe of the African and African diaspora experience. And these gingerbread houses really encapsulate it. They're really clever houses. They're very climate, um, very cool inside and hurricane resistant and they're also architecturally really beautiful and there's lots of different ones all around the wallpaper and then it's such a great wallpaper you even see a little lady um, lying down reading outside the house that's really detailed and so I love the idea of you're coming in a house and then you're seeing houses which I also extended here which I have art of lots of different houses again and what's special about this particular painting is along with the book I was telling you about which talked about the, ha the house's history I inherited, inherited this picture of um, the actual cottage that I live in that was, um, and I will keep, leave it here for when we move for the next people to live in. So it's a lovely kind of memento of Cottage Noir. Um, over on here, I have the console, which of course is full of all the kind of Doritos of family life. But on top, I have a few things that are quite special to me. Um, the first of this candle. So we've got into designing our own things with the cornrow. And one of the first things we designed is our own candle, which we always have burning here. And we put a phrase on it, fine girl. So we spent our childhoods in Lagos, Nigeria. And it's a real ubiquitous phrase out there. You hear fine girl, fine girl. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like something everyone says and always brings a smile to people's faces. So that's what we call the candle. So we have a fine girl and a fine boy candle on site. 
And I also have this, which I bought at auction. It's so pretty. Every time I look at her, I just can't stop. Um, it's called a lobby head, and it's also from West Africa, but this time from Burkina Faso. And they're meant to be protectors of the home. So I thought it's quite nice to have it in the front as well, because she's going to protect our home. And so I love the energy of it. And I also love her cornrows style. My daughters often wear their hair like this, and it's lovely for them to see it represented in art as well. One great thing about living in a cottage, it's full of quirks that you wouldn't necessarily have in a modern home. So this window, we're not quite sure what it was, but we think perhaps this is where it wasn't a window once and it was a little opening where the baker might have dealt with their customers um, kind of through this, through this hole here and that's now been made as a window. But regardless, it's brilliant because it lets all this light into hallways. Cottages are usually traditionally kind of dark places, but it's a, it's a great avenue of light. And of course, I've put some, I put a little, little picture of my husband there to kind of jazz it up a bit. But yeah, it's great you notice it. We've even got smaller windows upstairs. <laughs> it's full of interesting features. One pot of sadness for me is that I've mentioned a lot about Yoruba, which is my traditional um, culture, but I don't speak the language and neither do my children. However, we're trying so hard to introduce it to them. So what I thought when we moved in is I would get a custom rug and instead of welcome, which of course rugs traditionally have, it will say a cabo on it, which is my language Yoruba for welcome. So every time someone comes in, they'll see a cabo written here. And I tried, I got a font kind of like a handwritten font. And so it's a great marker as soon as you open the door that you can see that this is a proud British Yoruba home. So let me show you my living room. My professional journey has been a real pivot. Um, for about 15 years, I was Miss Finance. I worked in investment banks. I worked in valuations. I was all spreadsheets and working in the city of London. Um, what happened is I had a big kind of change around the same time that I moved into this house because I just so enjoyed decorating the house and finding and sourcing things that I loved, that I wanted in my home, combined with the fact that I found it so difficult to actually do this because it was very hard to find this kind of modern Afro Aristo Caribbean and chic aesthetic that I was telling you about, I realized there was a business opportunity here. Um, so I decided to kind of ditch the finance, which I realized actually wasn't my fat passion anyway. I've always loved history and heritage and art. And so this felt much more me and set up a business with my sister called The Cornrow where we would be as it were an, a curation and edit, a one-stop shop for people who wanted this kind of modern Afrocentric aesthetic that I just adore. I am so lucky it, it really is a breeze working my sister and I'm not I'm not just saying that we've just got very we, we agree on the important things in terms of our, what we think is beautiful and our aesthetic and what we want out of the business and we also have complementary skill sets she's very good at kind of the digital marketing side and that kind of the business logistics side and then i work more on the creative side so so it really works and if we have have an argument then our mum can sort us out <laughs> so here we are in my living room um the first thing about it is there's two fireplaces. One works and one doesn't. This is the one that doesn't. So then I thought, okay, let's have a lot of fun with this in terms of interior design. And I got a black and white geometric tile kind of all through. I made them lay it randomly, which actually is harder than it looks because I just didn't want it to look at all like it had a plan. And so they managed to pull it off and I'm really happy with it. And I was very lucky that I found an artwork that really complements it and a blind also with black and white geometrics. So it became a real um, theme of this room which I loved and I loved how it contrasted with the walls which I've made put a kind of a seagrass um, effect so it gives it really kind of textural effects because I wanted it to feel kind of the room to feel like a warm hug not at all kind of cold and clinical um, and then I had these two areas here which I thought would be great to make bookshelf reading I refuse to go on to Kindle I buy all my books and so I need as much space as possible so I filled it with books and also this little mementos wedding photos my first going out handbag just things that were really special to me on top here I have two dolls right here which um, a really good example of what I mean by modern Aristo. So these are dolls made by a Belgian artist who was really inspired by South African and West African doll culture. There were some lovely dolls um, which, which people used um, in West Africa, um, which were plastic, and everyone knows these little baby dolls. 
and she's turned them into these wonderful ceramic um, dolls and kind of decorated them in that black and white geometric um, vibe, which I love so much. And they're also available on the corn row and we think they're really special. Um, I've also got these two um, leopards here, um, which are rep rep reproduction Benin bronzes. So the Benin bronze is uh, one of the most prestigious, amazing art forms coming out of Nigeria. You might have heard about the siege of Benin where the British colonialists ransacked it and took a lot of the um, treasures to British Museum and other places. And always, there's a continued debate about they should be sent back to where they belong, which is in Nigeria. And so I've got this to kind of, as they're so beautiful artistically and also reminds us about our, her our heritage as well. These two, are my, these two ladies are very special to me. They're called Aisha and Shade. Um, they've got the most magnificent, proud, regal expressions, and I can't imagine having a house without Aisha and Shadi there. Um, they're some of our most popular products in the corn row, and everyone who buys them just loves them so much because they're just powerful, badass, wonderful women to have in your home. Sourcing things for the corn row is a kind of all of the above strategy. We always say we're on foot and we're online. On foot, we look a lot at um, auction houses, even eBay, sometimes you can find things. And also, of course, traveling. My sister just came back from South Africa. She got some wonderful things in Johannesburg and Cape Town that we've just put on the site. So we're always looking. And then online was is such a great resource for us too. Um, we were a business that burst in lockdown, so so much of the business has been online. And we've met other creators and makers and which we've then put their products on the site and built relationships. And so that's been able to give us such a broader kind of, you know, you can't travel everywhere, but online you can. And um, so we've got things, we've built relationships with people in Haiti, again in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Ghana. And so that's just mean, you know, the whole globe is at our dispersal, finding these products that we think are special enough to be part of the cornrow edit. So yeah, that's this side of the house. And then again, I've got some artwork as well. I'm always on the lookout for this. I think I was just walking down the street and I saw this person selling art and I was like, that's Grace Jones, isn't it? And he's like, yes. And so I, I picked that up. And um, then I have these dolls. Actually, this is the doll I was telling you about that was the original dolls that children in the 50s and the 60s used to play with in Ghana and Nigeria. And then these are the modern version. So you can kind of see the whole story, the whole transition there, which I thought was really nice. My husband and my two daughters play um, the piano and the saxophone. In fact, we're really happy today because my daughter just found out she passed her grade five exam. So that was great. The other side of the living room is the business end with the TV and the sofa, which we all kind of come in chill. I love cushions. I kind of, if I ever see a cushion, my eyes drawn to it. We sell a lot of them on the corn row. This one, I've seen in another home worthy house tour actually. It's by a wonderful South African designer called Shine Shine. And then this one is by a Haitian designer, Yela Valerie, the same lady that did the um, gingerbread houses and another wallpaper that I'll show you when we go upstairs. We had to do the sofa custom because, uh, of course, being a cottage, it's all got different lumps and bumps and we couldn't really buy something off the shelf. So it's kind of cut off to fit the mold of the, of the, the walls of the cottage. But the good thing about needing something custom is I could choose whatever I wanted in terms of fabric. So again, I was looking for something that kind of brought in the kind of West African symbolism imagery. And I thought that really worked with this kind of stripey design that I, I sourced over here in London. Something I'm very proud of is this war art, which is called an Asafo flag, which is from Ghana in West Africa. And it's a kind of dying out form. It's kind of hand, it's hand done by these artisans who kind of cut out these, cut, cut out the fabrics to make it this flag. And traditionally they were used as part of military companies. So every military company on this area in the Ghanaian coastline had their own flags. And you, cause, and when you would see the British flag here, which is quite interesting for an African piece of art. And as I said, these people were coastal, so they had a lot of um, exposure to kind of the British Navy and everyone who's coming up in terms of colonialization. So they used some of the motifs from them. This one is, I really wanted this particular flag for the house because of what it represents, which is a proverb. And the proverb is about the welcoming tree, which bears fruit. So you can see the tree here with lots of fruit and all the animals from the snakes to the bull to the birds are coming to, to enjoy the tree. And that's how I want the house to feel, like a welcoming tree and people coming to enjoy, you know, to enjoy being with us in our company and the hospitality. So that's this Sappho flag, and which we also, we love them so much. We have um, 
more bookshelves here, um, which of course um, I'm very proud of. And I've started to collect some edition, first editions and stuff, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that develops. I was really excited about these two chairs because they're black and white geometric and I was looking for chairs and we had no chairs here for ages because they had to be the perfect chairs and then when I saw these I was like we've got it. Um, we've got the again, other cushions. Now one thing about cottage noir is everything has an intention. There's nothing just here for, for, for being here's sake. So our cushions, this isn't just any old lady. This is a Haitian revolutionary freedom fighter, Sanente Belair, who died for the Haitian revolution. And she um, is, again, this is this wonderful Haitian artist, and this is her cushion. And on this side, we have a representation of an ancient queen of Benin. So again, I've talked about Benin Kingdom. It's very important to me, the story of Benin, and it's lovely to see the queen here on my cushion. So draped on the chair is a throw. I love the color palette. I just think it goes really well with kind of black and white and warm aesthetic of the living room. And embroidered on the throw is an expression that is really powerful um, for the black community. It says, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And it's an expression that basically really speaks to the colorism that's so often in society um, and lets my daughters know that, you know, deep, dark brown skin is beautiful. And then, you know, talking, as I said, about the modern Afro Afrocentric aesthetic, another example of that is this bean bag here. So the fabric, it couldn't be more ancient. This is called adire fabric. It's made in Nigeria. It's like hand dye. Adire means to tie and dye. So it's a tie and dye fabric done by hand. Um, everyone is completely unique. People traditionally used it for clothing. But I wanted to modernize it, so I've made it into a bean bag, which I don't think has ever been done before. Um, but I thought it was a great way to kind of have an ancient tra traffic, sorry, an ancient fabric, but within a kind of modern context. Um, here you have um, kind of more books and artwork. This is a lovely Ghanaian fertility symbol. I'm a bit wary of holding it because two girls is enough for me, but um, it's a very powerful and very beautiful piece of art. Um, this I picked up on travels to South Africa, a little handmade ceramic. I love it because it's like three ladies done really lots of beautiful detail here. And I love the colors as well. You know, so many times when people think of um, West Africa or African art, it's bright primary colors, which is great, but it doesn't always have to be like this. And oh, I just love, and one detail I love about this is they've all got little babies on their backs. As you see, that's how, it's actually <laughs> how we all carry our babies in, in West Africa. This is something I picked up recently um, in Paris, in a flea market in Paris. And I asked my daughters when I came back, can you guess what it was? And they, they couldn't guess. And I don't blame them really, because it's actually a pillow. So um, traditionally um, in West Africa, you'd have these beautifully ornate braided styles and you wouldn't want to ruin it, would you? By sleeping, sleeping flat. So people would sleep on um, things like this to elevate their head. And what I love about it is it's just something very functional, something to elevate your head, but somebody's taken the time to carve, um, carve and paint it beautifully. And it's quite unusual to see something painted quite so vibrantly. So it caught my eye immediately in Paris. And I was like, bonjour, this one please, and my best friend, <laughs> and managed to secure it. This is a working fireplace, um, but again, I've put things in here, which I think kind of, I love it because you've got this traditional 18th century English fireplace, but then I've got African masks here as well. And then this geometric vase, which we, we love and also saw in the cornrow. And then it was important for me to put cotton in the house. Now people have, I've read on the internet, it's quite interesting, different, different views about having cotton as an aesthetic in the house as a, as a black person, particularly as a black American person. Obviously, there's a lot of ties here with um, cotton plantations and slavery and all that. But and so I did think of it myself, but I was thinking of it as kind of celebratory and a remembrance, really, better than celebratory, remembrance of kind of people, of ancestors and what they've been through and what they've overcome and, you know, the beauty in that. So that's why I think it was lovely to put cotton in, in the house. I think my favorite thing in my home is something that's in my bedroom. It's a framed work of art, which was given to me on my Yoruba traditional wedding when I got married 15 years ago. 
and it's a letter that's been handwritten on handwoven fabric, um, which is a, tra it's a traditional letter that the groom's parents give to the bride's parents asking, please, can Kemi become married, come, become, come into my family and marry our son? And it's so beautiful, it's such a beautiful work of art on its own. And then it's such a lovely message that my in-laws have written to me. And then on top of all that, it's a fundamental and wonderful part of my ancient Yoruba culture. So it's kind of three in one, I think of it as a family heirloom and I really hope my children and grandchildren will have it in their house somewhere. And it's, again, as I was saying earlier, it's uni unique and special to this family and so priceless, really. Then I would like to talk about this coffee table, which is an auction purchase. It is um, a repurposed coffee table. It was not built to be one. If you can see, it's got a giant slab of wood underneath which we think was part of maybe a church or some kind of municipal building, you know, the other way around. And so the, that has actually often, that has obviously been taken off the building, chopped up, turned around, and someone's put a glass on it. And hey presto, it turns out to be a piece that's perfect size for the, um, for the coffee table, sorry, for the sitting room. Um, and then on top of it, you know, another space to store all my books, <laughs> which I have I kind of rotate them depending on what I've just purchased or what I'm dipping in and out to, in and out of. So I've got my books here and always like to have books in case the girls might be interested in reading something, trying to get them to read as much as possible. And then finally, inside the books, you'll see this here, which is actually a board game called Ayo, A-Y-O. And it's played a lot in Nigeria, but actually across West Africa and quite a lot of countries in the global south as well, actually. My daughters play it quite a lot with her husband and it's very, you need to be good at mental maths. And it's kind of like you move, the, you move these around the board in order to get certain numbers in each certain, um, in each certain hole. And so it's a lovely, aesthetically, it's a beautifully carved piece of wood, but it's also a fun game to play. Let me show you the rest of the house. Let's start off with the kitchen. I would say my personal style, I would say, is kind of modern Afrocentric. Like, I would hope when you, I would be pretty sure when you came in this home, you would know that was somebody of African heritage or someone that was very close to, the, to, to Africa and its culture and its soul, but in a modern way as well. Um, so not just, when you think a lot of times people think of kind of Africa, West Africa, go to rural scenes or safari scenes and all this kind of stuff. And that's just not my way. When I go back to West Africa, to Nigeria, that's not what I see. I see a modern, vibrant community. And so I wanted to bring that in as well. Um, also the fact that it's a family home, it was so important to me that I wanted somewhere that my two children could have a relaxed time, nothing too precious here, um, things that will inspire them. They're having a sleepover on Saturday, things that their friends will, you know, come and en enjoy being in this environment. So as much as I wanted it to be visually very kind of represented of my heritage, I also wanted it to be a warm, welcoming, fun place to be. Welcome to my kitchen. A kitchen is actually the room I did the least with. It was quite a good um, kitchen cabinets here already, and I rather use the budget on the rest of the house. But the one thing I did do, as you might be able to guess, is just choose a bright green color um, to repaint all the cabinets in. I wanted something fun and vibrant to try and encourage me to be in the kitchen as much as possible because I'm not the most enthusiastic chef. And also the kitchen is very close to the garden, so I wanted to have that kind of feeling of bringing the outside in. It was quite hard to choose the right shade of green because you, you might go to a paint shop and there's like a million different greens and I knew in my head exactly what I wanted. So I was so excited when I found this one and it worked out. I did commission one thing for the house though, which I couldn't resist, which is this which is a mosaic actually um, by a lovely artist, UK based artist called Dion Ibley. And we talked about it a lot. I wanted it to be mainly green because of the green cabinets, but I wanted it again to represent this kind of modern, modern Afrocentric vibe. So what we did is we took two fruits, the Aki fruit and the Scotch bonnet fruit. One which is really popular and iconic in Nigeria, which is Scotch bonnet, which makes all our food really spicy. And then the Aki is the Jamaican national fruit. So she made little mosaic Scotch bonnet and Aki's in various stages of ripening and kind of put it on here. And it's a great dual purpose because it's a splashback to protect my walls. And it's also kind of really aesthetic and celebrating my culture and heritage. 
other thing again as i always say that always makes me smile is that everything is intentional in cottage noir so even our tea towels you know we don't have regular like checkered red and white tea towels here this one here is um Toussaint Louverture, which is the, you know, I, you can tell I have a bit of a love affair with Haiti. He's the Haitian, Haitian freedom fighter that won independence from the French, which is absolutely amazing, um, in the 1700s. And the story about him and his image is here on the tea towel, which is lovely. And again, I'm hoping a little subtle history lesson for my daughters. And then even my oven glove here is brilliant. It's um, hands, black hands, because again, it's what we said about representation, you know, it's black people living in the UK. Often, you know, you look on the TV or in shops and you don't see yourself anywhere. And I wanted, where it really resonated at Christmas when I was looking for black angels for my girls, for the Christmas tree, and I couldn't find any. And it, But it's not just at Christmas. So when I found products like this, which is great, and it's got names of black musical stars across the ages, I was like, I need this in my home. And then, of course, to sell in the cornrow as well, which is where it's really popular. Well, this cottage is just on so many different levels. You had one step down to go to the kitchen, then two steps down to go to the dining room, which I, I wasn't planning on showing the dining room today. I'm kind of in between doing some interior design -y work because there's a dining room and there's another room at the back here, which is a shame, but I can't show you. They're not really ready to film, but you can just see, you're right, the different levels. And upstairs, again, lots of steps, you know, <laughs> and everything like that. And then, of course, these wonderful beams that you'll see going... <laughs> across the house that we've painted in various colours. Two girls, you need a lot of organisation. Organisation isn't my strong suit, so as much as I can write things down and schedule things is, is best. And so when I had this wall here, I had the idea of using chalkboard paint um, rather than ordinary paint. And so that means that I can kind of write and rub off quite easily. So I've got the week schedule of what the girls are doing every day, which is really helpful. And I also have more space here, which we kind of use as, 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 as needs be. So it's just ways to help me be organized. And actually this wall is pretty interesting because here, you know, we have a random kind of <laughs> key here, which we think is something to do with the original baker's oven. No one's really sure, but uh, it's kind of like a fun little quirky thing in the house. Next, I want to show you a super cool secret door we have. You'd probably get two different answers to whether my husband was involved in interior design, depending on who you're talking to. I definitely was, definitely was involved and I kind of gave him options of things and made sure he liked everything so he didn't just feel kind of like swept away by it all. But I was lucky enough that he kind of handed the reins to me. I mean, one thing is he does have a man cave, which he did choose a lot of the decoration and the furniture there. So that made him happy. But the overall aesthetic, I'm to credit or to blame, depending on what you think. <laughs> If you look down there, you'll see what looks like a bookshelf. Um, it even has a light fitting and a skirting board at the bottom to show that it really is a shelf. But it's not actually a shelf. This is actually wallpaper and it leads into my husband's man cave over here. <laughs> so again, we wanted the house to be fun and surprise visitors. And so this was really important for us to kind of, we saw a door and we thought, what can we do to make it interesting? Let's head upstairs and I'll show you the bedrooms. As you head upstairs, you won't help, you can't miss um, this wallpaper that I've put in this corner here. This is a wallpaper about the six ages of black womenhood um, from Yale and Valerie, um, and the Haitian design I mentioned earlier. And it's got a woman representing um, different, different eras of black womanhood, back to the Benin Kingdom, which I was telling you about, to kind of to freedom fighters in the US. Sorry, not this one. This one is a freedom fighter, Catherine Cleaver, the US civil rights movement. We've got Sanita Belair, who is the Haitian revolutionary. We've got a woman um, who kind of crystallizes kind of every woman looking after her family. And we've got a woman here who is a spy at the Haitian Revolution. Where is she? I'm um, here and really managed to get lots of secrets out of the French. So it tells, each picture tells a huge story. And what I love about it, not only is it bright and vibrant being yellow, but it's the first thing my daughters, whose bedroom's right here, what they see every morning when they leave their bedroom. So I really hope it kind of pumps them up and inspires them. Let's go check out one of my daughter's rooms. 
So this is the smallest room of the house. And when we first went into it, I was like, oh my gosh, where am I going to fit a bed? Um, it's so small. And then we realized there was a little cubby area here, which is actually the perfect size for a single bed, which would be brilliant for my 10 year old daughter. So we custom built this bed. And of course, being cottage noir, it wasn't just going to be an ordinary bed. We decided to make it into a um, princess bed. So I got some, uh, you know, the curtains to be made into this kind of um, pull back here and at night time she closes them when she's feeling like she wants to be all snugged and snuggled up inside and then inside we've put a custom wallpaper now if you can see carefully it's actually lots of blanket and um, sorry lots of mattresses because it's based on the story of princess and the pea and sleeping under you know the the pea was underneath and the princess could feel it and so I hope it makes her feel like this is a princessy kind of bed um, decorating is a combination of her stuff <laughs> and my stuff, which you might be able to see the difference here. Um, I love this product in particular. It's a um, uh, Manu Mermaid cushion, which is also available in the cornrow. Again, coming back to representation, I just wanted her to, um, to know that she can be anything, even a mermaid. And it was before the Little Mermaid movie came out with, um, with Hallie um, Bailey in it. So we were there first and we, and we love it. And um, then, of course, the important storage at the bottom, because I think the best kind of design is when something's visually appealing, but also works and is useful. And so these two huge drawers underneath hide a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stuff, so it helps her room be uncluttered. Yes, my daughter, she definitely does have a lot of input and in a lot of the soft furnishing she chooses and then the colour of the wallpaper. So we chose a particular kind of wallpaper which reminded me of that tie and dye adire fabric that I told you about earlier. And she could have chosen any colour she wanted that wallpaper and she chose this kind of soft grey colour. So that was great. So it kind of a way that I kind of was very much involved but she felt like she had some agency as well. So being an ancient cottage, every room has a fireplace because, of course, that's how they kept their houses warm in those days. This fireplace, though, has been cottage noir. It's been put, I wanted a punchy colour on it, so we chose a green um, colour, so it kind of made a more feature of it. And then what she did, and she actually helped get involved in this as well, is we've put this kind of glitter paint over it. Um, so at night time, it really kind of sparkles as well, it makes it kind of like a fun feature of her room. I love this picture, it's one of my favourite pictures of my daughters and, and that, I don't know if they still do it now but about 10 years ago it was a real thing to do a cake shot of your daughter kind of let her eat her cake in her at her first birthday and I love this picture and we had to really convince her to eat the cake. Um, she's not so happy to have it, she thinks it's a bit embarrassing picture but I just think it's the cutest thing. <laughs> I think one thing I think you should have, I don't like to be judgmental, but one thing I think is wonderful to have in kids' rooms is just lots of books. Now, if I was not myself, this would be lovely arranged beautifully, and it was when we first moved in. Now you can just see this is a very much lived-in bookcase because she's always taking books out, putting books in, sharing with her sisters. And we've got a wide range of books for children across the house. Again, you'll see a lot of the books have got the representation that I think is so important. This is one of our favourite. He's a black British historian called David. David Olusoga, he's amazing and he does these books for young children. And then we have a combination of fiction and non-fiction. And again, as I said with the bookshelves downstairs, it's great not just to have bookshelves, but to have little knickknacks here as well. So we went to Kennedy Space Centre, she has something from there. They're always trying to beat their time on their Rubik's Cube. And then she has art that she's made herself. Um, because, you know, I, the best art, to go back to what I said earlier, is the things that your family make or what you create or what make, make meaning to you. So I think I'll never lose some of these little cutie things that she did at school. I think what gives home a soul is personal possessions. Yeah, that's why I feel like every home really should be individual. What makes it unique are the things that are unique to you whether it's your mementos you picked up on holiday or your favourite books that you have on the bookshelf or the postcards that you picked up at this exhibition you liked last week or, you know, things like that. The, the, your own personal archive, which I think shouldn't be stored away in pho photographic albums or in cupboards, but should be displayed and enjoyed. And that's what's you and that's what gives your home its soul. This is my older daughter's room. Um, she has the same wallpaper as her younger sister. Again, she could choose whatever colour she wanted as long as it was that particular wallpaper. And so she went for purple because it's her favourite colour. 
Now, the big argument that me and my daughter had in the room was about the bed um, because I fell in love with this bed um, at an auction site. It's an antique bed, kind of the same period as the house, so I thought it just matched it purposely, perfectly and it just reminded me of a, like a fairy tale cottage bed. She loves it now and it's super comfy, but I guess she wanted a new custom bed like her sister, so luckily I managed to win that battle. Again, I have a real love affair for curtains and stuff. I think that comes from my Jamaican heritage as well. And so we got these cust this custom um, curtain to go over it to give her that kind of more cosy, grand feeling. And then a lovely little flower print at the behi behind here. So that was really special. Again, my curls have a lot of input into what kind of duvet and the soft furnishings. They can choose that, so a lot of it is them. This is her favourite cushion, which her grandma made for her, and you can see it's all a bit dog-eared now, but she won't sleep without it. She had a fireplace as well, so this one was, again, purple to give her the pop of colour and glittery. And then all sorts of services. I always feel almost more is more. I just love it as an expression of the things that we collect and we love. And she has these African-Russian dolls in her fireplace, which are great. I always thought Russian dolls, you can get Russian dolls of dolls looking at dolls or looking like pets or looking like flowers but I've just never seen a black woman on a Russian doll so I actually commissioned some and to sell on the cornrow and then I had to have some on the at home as well so this is a lovely set of of kind of African women Russian dolls that she has here um Venus and Serena Williams the sisters book that takes pride of place my girls play tennis too and although I don't think they're quite Venus and Serena standard it's lovely to kind of have that kind of parallel and um, she has a 2022 vision board up that we did at the beginning of the year and <laughs> see how that's going. And just little thing, this used to be a hat when she went to a little prep school here. So we've kept that as a little piece of her personal history. These, my girls love these. They have so many of them, I have no idea, but whenever they have a, um, one a birthday or we go shopping, they always pick up another one. I think they're quite popular with the tweens in the UK. Let's head to my bedroom now. Okay, hey, welcome to my bedroom. Um, so across the house, you saw, as I said, I kind of like a lot of things, a lot of energy, a lot of more is more. Apart from my bedroom, <laughs> I've actually had my bedroom trying to be the most minimal Zen room of the house because I really just kind of come in here to sleep. I don't even have clothes in my bedroom. I just really wanted somewhere that I just come and relax and unwind. So there's basically two big things in my bedroom. One is the bed, which I wanted to squeeze in the biggest bed I could, so it'd be maximum cozy. And this headboard, which I was really excited about, it's a friend designer of mine called Eva Shinaike. Um, she's a Nigerian British designer, and this is an ancient symbol of eternity. So I think that's lovely for kind of a bedroom, like a marital bed. And then of course the wallpaper, which I just love every time I see it. It's the cl it's clouds. It actually is wallpaper that had to be laid in a very specific way to get that kind of um, continual effect. And again, we wouldn't want to lie down sleeping in the clouds. The ceiling of this bedroom, a very pale blue color. I wish I painted more ceilings actually. I feel like it's a fifth wall that often gets ignored, but I just didn't want that kind of harsh white um, next to this wallpaper. And I just wanted everything to be pale, pale blue, which is what I did with the, the cupboard here and the bookshelf. On top here, you'll see what I was talking about earlier, the letter that my husband's family sent to, sent to my family asking for my hand in marriage. And so we've had it framed here and it's kind of a central part of the bedroom. And the, yeah, and then that's ba basically it. It looks out to the garden. I just wanted a calm room. I found a lovely, an Ikea actually, a lovely light fitting that I thought looked a bit like a cloud, which I thought was <laughs> worked well with my cloud theme. And yeah, just wanted it to be a restful, warm space. This is a sculpture that I picked up in Jamaica. It's actually a man and woman, kind of, at, it was their wedding day. So you can see they've sculpted the woman with her flowers there looking adoringly at a very proud, recently made husband. And given that this is a room I spend with my husband, who I love to bits, I thought it was a lovely little representation of this. These light sconces are by a UK company called Puki. I wanted them, you know, as I said, I love reading. So it's a great way that I can kind of read and my husband can go to bed and switch off his one and I can have a bit of light. I wanted to get a nice shade of kind of blue that complemented the walls. And I just love this kind of brass fit. 
Okay, so come into this room, which is girls only, <laughs> girl gang, and it's my daughter's bathroom. So they got to choose the design of this bathroom. They wanted it all very minimalist and zen and spa-like, which I was like, okay, you can. But I was allowed one cottage noir touch, which were these tiles that we put here by the bath. And these are one of the kind custom tiles made by a wonderful UK company called Balanaeum. And they were made for an exhibition I did at the Museum of the Home. And they're cameos of black women with different hairstyles. And so it's very unusual, again, talking about representation, to see a tile of a, black, of, a, of a black woman or a cameo. So these are really special. And the artist really did a great job in kind of showing different colors and different hair to, hairdos and this one and earrings and everything. So it's lovely when the girl's in the bath to have this kind of visual imagery for them and adds a lovely warmth to this otherwise very aesthetic, because the girls love that word, aesthetic, bathroom. I think home to me um, is an exhale. <laughs> like, that's how I feel. Like, I think so much is going on in the outside world. Um, as a black woman, as just somebody who reads the news of what's going on right now, as someone, you know, the economy, there's so many stresses outside the door. And I just feel when I come in and close the door, I just want to, I just want to exhale and fill myself. It even happened today, I came in quite flustered. And as soon as I kind of got home, had my cup of coffee and everything, then my, I could feel my shoulders droop. And that's what I want for my family as well. It's our little solace, our safe space, and, and our place where we can kind of regenerate um, ready for tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.